Hey, happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I'm Jeremy Pearsons, and I'm so glad to be with you at the start of, of what will be our best year yet. Amen? Amen. I mean, let's come into agreement right now on it that God has big things for us, that we are headed into his plan. You know, we've been for the last several days talking about Jesus, our good shepherd, who calls us by name and he leads us out. And we are done with 2014 and it is never coming back again. And for many people, I can hear you shouting glory, hallelujah right now. But listen, no matter what that year was like for you, Jesus, your good shepherd, he's speaking to you right now and you can hear his voice. You do know his voice and he will call you by your name and lead you out. But here's what we've been establishing. Jesus doesn't just lead you out. He also leads you in. He led you out of sin and into righteousness. He's led you out of sickness and into healing, out of, out of darkness and into light, out of death itself and into life. And we've been looking at John chapter 10 and all of it kind of culminated into the 10th verse where Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. He is leading you out out of whatever you're in that you need to be led out of. Amen. Let's pray again together today and get right back into the word. Father, again, we are so thankful today to have your word. So thankful to be able to open it and look at it and set our eyes on it and get it down into our hearts. And I'm asking you today by the help of the Holy Spirit that you would take these things Root them deep down on the inside of us. Father, by your help and by your grace, we will be a doer of the word that we hear today. I ask again, Father, for eyes that see Jesus and ears that hear his voice and hearts that understand who we are in him and who he is in us. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to get right back into where we've been over the last couple of days in the book of Exodus Chapters 1, 2, and 3. It's a story I know you're familiar with, but I want you to see it today and, and begin to hear it and look at it as a picture and a type of Jesus leading you out. And don't ever forget, that's what he said there in John chapter 10, verse 3. He's your good shepherd. He speaks to you and you know his voice. He calls you by name and he leads you out. Out. And what a picture we have of this. We started in Exodus 1 where we saw that the blessing of the Lord was all over the children of Israel and in a foreign country, in a place that they were not supposed to be prospering, they were. They were stronger and they were mightier than all the people of Egypt. And it finally caught the attention of the Pharaoh and he got his people together and said, look, all these people are stronger than us. All these people are mightier than us. And he said, let's deal shrewdly with them. In other words, we got to come up with a plan. We have got to put our heads together, put all our Egyptian heads together and come up with a plan to kind of suppress these people because we can't have them mightier than us. We can't have them more prosperous than us. His fear was that they were going to leave. Well, why would he be afraid that they leave? The only reason he'd be afraid that they would leave is if they were a major part of that economy. And they were. They were stronger than everybody else. They were more in number and they were mightier. And he said, look, I'm afraid that they're going to turn on us with our enemies or maybe they're just going to leave us. And we got to come up with a plan to try to kind of keep these people needing us and, and don't let them know we need them. I mean, you've seen this thing played out how many times through human history? But that's what was happening here. And what was motivating all of this was jealousy and envy and somebody looking at the blessing of the Lord and wanting what these people have. And we've been talking about this and I'll, I'll mention it again. If you're going to live in the blessing, and you're going to prosper God's way, then you need to know persecution comes with that. You need to know that people see that and not everybody shouts glory hallelujah with you. Some people don't like it and they want to try to take it from you, but don't. Number one, don't be surprised when that happens. But number two, don't be surprised if Jesus is leading you out of one place and into a place that you think you can't prosper there. 
That's kind of his thing. I don't know if you've noticed that before, but he, that's kind of what he does. He, he takes people from one place and he leads them into another place, a place that doesn't look like they're going to be able to prosper there. I mean, how many times have you seen that he did that? He did it with Abraham. He did it with Isaac. He did it over and over. And yet Isaac prospered in the middle of famine. You're not supposed to be able to prosper in famine. But evidently nobody told God and God failed to mention it to Isaac. And so he prospered anyway. Don't be surprised if God does the same thing to you. If he puts you in a place and you look at that place and you think, God, how am I going to prosper there? How am I going to feed my family there? Don't hesitate. Don't be in fear. You go and you not only let him prosper you there, not only bring life to you, but abundant life excessive life, life that overflows into the people around you. So this is kind of a brief recap of everywhere we've been. And I want you now to see something we left off with yesterday in chapter two. In Exodus two, verse 23, it says, now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage. Because of the bondage, if you were to go back and look at some of the verses we read earlier, these these Egyptian people put taskmasters over them. Task, you look it up, it means tax. They the plan they came up with was to tax these people to death if need be, to tax them financially, to tax them uh, physically, to to cause them to make them. The Bible says serve with rigor basically create a situation that breaks them down from the inside out so we can stop this growth that we see. And this was the plan that they came up with. You know, I mentioned this to you yesterday, but Jesus said, you need to, you need to pay attention. He said in John chapter 10 that a thief, anyone that does, come not, does not come in the door is a thief and a robber. And I mentioned to you that there was a difference between a thief and a robber. And I never really even took note of that until one time I was, not long ago, Sarah and I had been invited to minister in another country and we were on our way and I was on the airplane. And I, I really sensed in my heart that the Lord was speaking to me and my assignment was to go into this place and to declare war on the spirit of poverty that had been in this city and on this nation for centuries. And I'm thinking, declare war, God, <laughs> Who am I to declare war? But man, it just kept getting so big in me. And I'm I'm reading in John chapter 10. And you know, the Lord's talking to you when you're looking at scriptures that you've looked at hundreds of times before, but words are popping out in ways they never had. And I'd never noticed before that Jesus made a difference between a thief and a robber. And I thought, why, why a difference between a thief and a robber? And I looked it up and I found out a thief basically means what you think it means. It's somebody who steals. But then a robber is not just a thief. A robber is somebody who plunders, somebody who comes in and turns everything inside out and upside down and just puts a stop and an end to the way life was before. And from that moment on, it's chaotic. That's what a robber does. You've seen those movies where there's been a break in and the people come home and everything is just overturned and lamps on the floor and broken glass and drawers all pulled out. And I thought, Lord, why are you showing me this? This is, it's interesting, but I don't really understand all of it. And then he's taking me over here to Exodus and I'm looking at where the children of Israel are crying out because of this bondage. And I'm looking at taskmasters and finding out it means tax masters. And I'm like, God, I've heard this story since I was a kid. Why revelation on it now? I had no idea. Well, got off the airplane. Uh, the, the, the family of the ministry that invited us, good, close, personal friends of ours, they welcomed us and uh, got situated at the hotel. It seemed like it was later that day. We ended up going out with them. And he had, my friend had told me before I came, months and months before that, They had kind of been going through some stuff in the church and in their family and and just to have him in prayer. He didn't really make a big deal out of it. He told me some of what it was, but not much. But when I got over there, I found out he couldn't tell me all the details on the phone because their phones had been tapped and that this situation was much more serious than I had even known. 
And we sat down together and he began to unfold to me all the details of what was going on. And in a nutshell, what had happened was somebody, the best they can tell that was close to them in their organization of that church, in, that, in their uh, ministry family, somebody saw them prospering. And they were prospering in a nation and in a city where you look around and you think nobody can prosper here. And yet they were. These are people that have been believing this word and preaching this word and bringing people into their church to preach this word. And, and you can see it too. You drive up to their place and it's like light in the middle of darkness. They're prospering. And what happened was somebody got jealous. Somebody got jealous and went to a government agency and turned in all this speculation and suspicion. And here's what ended up happening. They, because of the need of, uh, of another minister in a conference, they, they had need to go to their ministry headquarters in the middle of the night to get something for somebody. And when they got there, there were people there. And the people said, um, is this a ministry? Is there a pastor that's here? We need prayer. And it's, it was all very strange, but the, but the, the, the man who's on staff uh, for my friends, he opened the door, but the moment he opened the door, these people busted in, pulled out guns, and started going through everything started turning everything inside out and upside down. And I, don't, I can't get into all the details of it with you now, but while my friend is sitting there telling me the story of this, I'm going, that's a thief and that's a robber. And these people have come to rob them of the blessing that's on their life. And I started sharing with them. I said, man, let me tell you what the Lord was saying to me on this airplane on the way here. And I started talking to him about these tax masters and he's telling me all of this has to do with, with taxes and all of it has to do with, with us prospering and the government and the people not liking it and they're trying to take what we've got. And I'm going, this, I'm reading about this from the book of Exodus. I'm reading what Jesus said in John 10. And it's just astounding to me. Well, let me tell you something. I can't give you all the details of it. But before I came today to tape this broadcast, my friend called and he said, we had the last meeting and we found out we're getting everything back. Glory to God, they're getting everything back. And I, I, I want you to see that these scriptures, old as they may be, still apply to you and to me. Jesus, we went over there with this word and I believe it was for the church, but I believe it was for that family. And I said, Jesus is leading you out of this thing. And in the months and, and the time that followed, he has led them right out of it and they're back on top. Praise God. Now listen to this. I want to show you this. I've got just a few minutes. Remember what we're reading here in chapter two. It says, now it happened again in the process of time that the king of Israel died and the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage. And they cried out, what they do? They cried out and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. And God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God acknowledged them. I want to talk to you about something that I've never said any of this before. This, the Lord just brought this to me just in, in preparing for these broadcasts, but I saw something in a way I'd never seen it. When the scripture says here that these, that these children of Israel cried out, that's a Hebrew word. I, I guess you say it, Shava or Shava. And it's a cry for help or freedom from trouble. It means to cry aloud. It's also this, it's a shout to attract attention. So these people cried aloud. They cried out to God. And it was a shout to attract attention. When you read this, there's something about the way this is written. It kind of leads you to believe that God had almost forgotten about these people and that he, oh yeah, remembered them. That's not what this is at all. I want you to know though, that God responds to the cry of people who need them, who need him, excuse me. 
God responds and he is quick to listen to the cry of people who need his help. Listen to this out of uh, Psalm 72. It says, he will deliver the needy when he cries, the poor also, and him who has no helper. He will spare the poor and needy, and he will save the souls of the needy. He will redeem their life from oppression and violence, and precious shall be their blood in his sight. Listen to this out of uh, the 34th Psalm. I'll bless the Lord at all times. You've heard this before. His praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. He delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. Listen to this. This poor man cried out. He cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of, remember I told you to make note of those words, out of, he saved him out of all his troubles. The Lord is near excuse me, saved him out of all his troubles. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them, delivers him out of them all. One more, you ready? He says in Psalm 56, you number my wanderings, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. Let me tell you about something. And this is a powerful thing and you need to grab a hold of it. There is such thing as a cry of faith. What got the attention of God Almighty? It's when these poor people cried out. Don't you ever underestimate the compassion of our God. If you are in a a terrible situation and you need help out of it, you cry out for help. Why? What, What is that? It's humility. It's saying, God, I can't do this on my own. I cry out to you. And he is quick to pay attention to the cry of faith. Don't ever forget that. We'll talk more about this tomorrow. But listen, I'm almost out of time, but I don't want you to go anywhere. I'll be back in a moment. But coming up right now, I want to show you a story about a man who chose to follow God and how God led him out of poverty and into the life that he'd been dreaming of. Watch this. My name is Farrell Kaiser. I'm from Enterprise, Alabama. I have a wife. Her name's Glenda, two children, Christy and Lee three grandchildren. I've lived in Southeast Alabama for 58 years. My mother came out of the early days of Pentecost in Southeast Alabama, got saved in 1936. I grew up in deep poverty. My daddy was a sharecropper. He, in later years, he got a job at a sawmill and then worked at a cotton mill in a textile plant. My mother and dad came out of the Great Depression, but the Great Depression never came out of them. And uh, then, so I, being raised in that, they rehearsed it all my life and I heard it until it built those walls inside and developed my thinking into poverty thinking. But in 79, I walked into a Christian bookstore in Dothan, Alabama, and I picked a book up off the bookshelf called The Laws of Prosperity. And I found out, as I studied it, it opened my heart, and I got knowledge of God's Word. And it was by Brother Copeland. I didn't know how to walk into blessing, I didn't know how to believe God by faith for the promises of prosperity. Now, I found out real quick when I was studying his book that prosperity is not just a lot of dollars. It's the ability to use God's ability to meet the needs of mankind, whatever those needs are, spirit, soul, and body. It took two or three years before the breakthrough came financially. And we we, uh, got our general contractor's license, began to build because we're applying the laws of prosperity. Uh, The business went extremely well, made a lot of money. We were tithers. Brother Copeland taught me that the tithe is the 10%, but tithing's done with the mouth. And so my wife and I, we would take communion and we would uh, tithe our tithe, make our profession of faith over our tithe. And we never spent a dime on advertising, but we'd always do a little bit extra for our customers and they would tell on us. And so, word of mouth, and and, uh, people trusted us. And 
we gave them no reason not to. And in 1990, I got so busy preaching, I didn't have time to build no more. And I went to a believer's uh, seminar in Birmingham, Alabama at the Boutwell Auditorium. And on Friday night, the Lord spoke to me, said, now's the time to go full time in the ministry. And we did, and we've never looked back. I ministered to the local church. Uh, two things the Lord spoke to me to major on, and one was faith, and the other was on the, the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Spirit. And we have seen thousands, thousands of people baptized in the Holy Spirit in our meetings uh, over the past 23 years. In the early days when I first listened to him, when I was driving that wore out yellow Pinto, <laughs> I, I, God dropped it in my spirit that we would need an airplane to uh, minister and to keep up with our schedule. I have a um, couple of ministry airplanes and I have a runway in my backyard <laughs> so I can fly out of my house to just about anywhere. <laughs> We sowed a seed, a sizable seed into a Jewish ministry. 10 months later, received a quarter of a million dollar harvest. We were able to pay off everything we owed. We paid completely out of debt, investment debt uh, and everything. The Lord just put us in real estate. And so we purchased uh, land. We have rentals and I have property in Florida that we finance for people and helped them get a home. I'm able to be a blessing because I heard the message of prosperity in 1979, and I've never give up on it. I feed on it every day. That's why I'm out here now. I have, as a partner of Brother Copeland, I am a partaker of his anointing, and that's why I fly. I have an aviation anointing. That's why I have real estate. I have real estate anointing. <laughs> the blessings, because of the anointing attracts it, they they chase me. <laughs> I slow down and let them catch me. <laughs> I'm living the abundant life. I have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Jesus is your good shepherd. He leads you into good, better, and best. This new year, take a step of faith into the abundant life with the True Prosperity Package. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland's teaching series, True Prosperity, shares biblical financial principles to move you out of lack and into true prosperity. Prosperity is more than just finances. It includes healing, protection, favor, wisdom, and total well-being. Discover how to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd who leads you into the best and beyond all you can ask or think in Jeremy Pearson's teaching series, Take Heart, Courage to Answer the Call. Move from where you are to where God wants you to be. Be strong and courageous and live the adventurous life of faith God has for you. You were created for greatness. Step into your calling and live a life of true prosperity. Start the new year in God's Word and take hold of His promises for your prosperity. Order your copy of the True Prosperity Package today for only $24. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call toll free 800-600-7395. Jesus is leading you into something greater. Move into all God has for you and step into your calling, a life of joy, peace, and more than enough. For an additional 10% off, order online. That is such a precious story of the goodness of God in Pharaoh's life. He was living the same way that he'd been raised and, of course, getting all the same results. But then he got a hold of the Word of God. And you notice that it changed everything for him? It goes right in line with everything we've been talking about, how Jesus led him out of poverty and now into this beautiful, abundant life. And he's a blessing to other people around him. Glory to God. And wouldn't it be great if, you've, if life itself just had this button you could press to restart everything? Well, listen, Jesus made that possible. It's possible to have a fresh start in Him today because He paid the price for every sin. He paid the price and the penalty for all of our mistakes. And through Him, you and I can get this life turned all the way around. So, Make your new start today. If you've never been born again, give your life to Jesus today. Let me pray with you. If you've never been born again, just pray this after me. Say, Father in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. 
I repent of all my sin and I thank you for your forgiveness. Jesus, be the Lord of my life. I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart. Jesus is the Son of God. He died for me. He rose again for me. And now he lives for me. And Jesus, I want to live for you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Take my life and do something with it. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, the Bible says that right now you are in right standing with God. That means there is nothing between you and God but love. And love's name is Jesus. And the Father finds no fault in you whatsoever. And you can live and do things in life differently than the way you have before. And you need to do this. Write this day down on your calendar that this is the day you were born again. January 1st, New Year's Day, a fresh start for you. Now, Kenneth and Glory Copeland, my grandparents, have a free gift that they want to give to you. It's called the Salvation Package. If you got born again today, then get a hold of this. It's going to help you grow spiritually. It's a book called He Did It All For You. It's by Kenneth and Glory Copeland. And along with that, we're going to send you two brochures about how to read and how to study your Bible. Learn what belongs to you right now as a child of God because God's promises for your prosperity, those belong to you. Find out more about this. Request your free salvation package at kcm.org today. Hey, listen, happy new year, everybody. This is going to be the best year yet. You hold on to that God is good. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy Pearson's reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Learn who you are in Christ and how to begin your new life in victory. Request your free salvation package today at kcm.org salvation. Jesus did it all for you. Receive his love and experience the good life God has for you. For additional teaching and free information on salvation, go to kcm.org salvation. Continue to grow in God's Word with this week's Believer's Voice of Victory, available at kcm.org for purchase, streaming, or download. Let God's grace abound toward you and live in the blessing. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The 2015 Branson Victory Campaign, February 26th through 28th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. The 2015 Southwest Believers Convention, June 29th through July 4th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. The 2015 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 12th through 14th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia.